why then, Trilis, and welcome back, of course, to Let's Play Aurora 4X, a lovely uh, Dwarf Fortress type space game. So, just could afford a little bit in time. However, our lovely salvage ships, which are currently in the R, are ready to come home. I don't want to send them in any further into Greenfield, just until we've confirmed that Greenfield's now safe. So what I will do is take you to Earth. Take you to Earth. Dun, dun, ba -dun, ba -dun, ba -dun, ba -dun, Refuel. Resupply. And then, because we have both minerals and ship components, we will unload all minerals and I think unload all in... You can do unload ship component and then singularly. I'm pretty sure unload all installations technically unloads all your ship components as well. So we'll try that. And then we'll unload all of these components and be able to start having a look at them. See if we can back uh, engineer them and generate some new things for us. So go do that. That will take you. How long will that take? Eh, like a month. That's fine. Let's see if we can skip forwards until that happens. At some point, we're going to need to work on actually having ourselves a, a scanny stealth. Not a stealth ship, sorry. A, a recon ship. Another science vessel. That's the word I'm looking for. Not stealth, science. They both begin with S. It's fine. Did we... Oh, there we go. Right. So, four research points for thermal sensor sensitivity. Eight has been downloaded. A lot of research points for missile launcher uh, reload rate. So, when you get these things from the salvage, you tend to upload them to the salvage ship, and the salvage ship has to bring them home and then download all the data that they've discovered. And now we have a load of bonus data, which is effectively like free research points, you know. That's not to be sniffed at, 1,500 research points. We also have, if we've downloaded it, oh, unloaded it, more like, industry, stockpile, ship components. No, you haven't unloaded them yet. Really? I guess it'll take you time to unload them. Yeah. Move to Earth. Oh, so you're in the system. You've downloaded them. Now you're in the system. Okay, but you haven't actually made it to Earth yet. How long will that take? More than 20 days? Oh, really? Only jumped 10. Slowly, slowly. We'll get there. Look, our astro miners are coming in system now with Temple. Hello. Tolkien's completed orders, construction master row completed on Earth. Administration person, blah, 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 blah. Ground force and covalent A1 have reduced the unrest by 16%. I'll have to check the unrest level, that's quite high. So, firstly, Earth, stockpile. There we go. So, with these, you can actually scrap them for material. You get uh, mineral and wealth equal to 30% of the original build cost. Or you can disassemble them with the chance of getting knowledge of the technologies behind them. So, we'll do that for the ECM. Now, I wish it had a confirmation here saying, You've unlocked or you are working towards something. Okay, no new technology. So, that's saying basically there is nothing that we can get out of this. Um, you'll probably see the same message there. No? I'm pretty sure we have that already. Either way, we'll also do the thermal sensors because I want to get the technology from them. Gravitational service sensor, I'm pretty sure it will just say no tech, new technology because we have gravitational service sensors. Missile fire control. Fire control. Active search sensor. And we'll try the drive, but it's, yeah, likely to say that. I think we'll just scrap those. Just at the bits. So we have a bit of extra technology now. If we check over here, we should see... Yeah. A good chunk of research there. If we have a look at... Do we get any... Yeah, reactor power boost. Right, so the reactors had a reactor power boost installed, which gets an extra 5% uh, in exchange for explosion chance. What else did we get? Sensors and fire control? Some active grab stuff? EM sensitivity stuff? Fire control speed rating? Thermal sensor? That's pretty nice. That's a good haul. Hmm. I'm happy. I'm very happy with that. Right. 
And that's what your salvage ships do. Uh, what else are we going to check? Kvalen, right. You want to check your issues. So you had... Somewhere in this list, there will be like your uh, descent, your, your unrest. I can't remember where it is. Political stability modifier. Oh, yeah, that's going to really hurt their efficiency. Yeah, so that's the modifier that's going to really harm a lot of things going on. That's about 51%, so that's going to really slow down everything. Uh, do we have any ground units? We do. Mm. Yeah, we're going to have to give them some sort of force to make them happy. They should be okay. We did decrease it by 16%, so I'm guessing that every like month we go from now on, that should keep decreasing over and over and over and over again. What I will likely do is I'll probably give them our facts, like half the facts for now, once they have the ability to look after them, because they will need some... Mm. Do you have any construction factories? Oh, you don't. Okay. They will need some... Maintenance facilities. There we go. Yeah, they're going to need five maintenance facilities to be able to look after a thousand tons. Because each maintenance facility looks after 200 tons of ship. A fact is a thousand tons or less, so... Hmm... Okay. Chat's also reminded me that the police strength slash modifier, the modifier is... Wait, wait. Let that pop up again. The annual rate at which unrest is reduced based on police strength, population size, and population species attribute. So currently we're reducing uh, unrest by 300% per year. And it's only going to go up 100% per year. So we should be good to decrease that to zero with no issues. Eventually we'll give them a fleet. We'll probably give them the old facts and just get new facts in Sol when we develop a new design. But for now that's okay. So we are fine there. Over here on Kavalan, we're working on that. Here we are working on actually getting people. 51 mines, 18 automated mines. We'll move the automated mines eventually. Terraformers in orbit are doing a good job. Working on the nitrogen. We're getting close to this being habitable. Okay. So what I'm likely to do is, I'm just going to say we put a cut in here and we'll do some like miscellaneous background tasks. Uh, I've stopped the colony ships that I forgot about that were taking people from Earth to Kavalan A1. What I'll do is get them to do the Kavalan A1 to 2 route and just keep going back and forth. And that, yeah, we're going to skip ahead. Hello! Welcome back YouTube. Hello, hello, hello. We have skipped forward a little bit in time here and we have a couple of new developments. Firstly, the additional nitrogen to the atmosphere of Kavalan A2 has been completed. Let's check Kavalan A2. How are you doing? No max and we no longer need any infrastructure at all. We are perfectly happy here, which means that this is perfectly breathable. We will, however, need to do something with the platform in orbit. I, I don't know where we will terraform next. There are options. Um, let's bring up. Oh, also we found a new system. We'll refresh this. You will see Random Cat. Named after Random Cat Guy. System position. Line up. Oh, I must actually line you up over here. Save. There we go. Uh, right. So, was there anywhere in the covalent system that we really cared about? The moon. Empty. Anything? Yeah. Right. So, there's another way of looking at your colony stuff. Potential colonies. This button up here. So, you see this by colony cost. And then we can click on them. We can also see mineral deposits. So, you know, Earth. Kvalon. 
Kvalon 2. Williamson. Williamson, Williamson, Williamson. How far are you away? Distance from primary. Population existing. Uh, I wish it said distance from home or something. Williamson. I'm looking up on the map now. It's two jumps away from Sol, directly below. It's got a lot of carbon, mate. It's not super helpful, though. Greenfield. Uh, we haven't surveyed yet. Williamson. Ooh! It's terrible, terrible accessibility. But that's got to be... Some of the most ridiculous amounts I've ever seen on a planet. Holy cow! 30 million geranium, 26 million tritanium, 4.5 million boronide, 26 million vendorite, and 123 million saurium. The problem is it's all point one accessibility, which instantly makes it trash. That's, you know, it's very nice that there's a lot there, but it would take me 10 times inventory to get anything out, so. Uh, we'll update that, actually, to 10. Maximum potential colony cost gives us a much larger list. Uh, auto center, exclude plants over 100 AU, exclude by temperature, exclude... So, basically, if it's 100 AU, astronomical units, away from the primary, it will not appear. So, this is useful for things like binaries, where you've got a binary compo uh, component really, really far out, and it'll take you years to travel just into the system and then to the binary component. Uh, exclude by temperature, exclude by oxygen. No, 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 no. Is there a way to have, like, minerals only? Yeah, that's a shame. Okay. Let's look through this list. Liara! Not bad. It's got Durano, it's got Saurium, it's got some Corundium. No... No survey data, okay. I mean, Liara's right next door, which is one of the helpful things. Ooh, Winter Mute. How far away is Winter Mute? Uh, three jumps. Mm. And that is a colony cost of 8.29. Yeah, I think our only real choice here in terms of terraforming is going to be where was it? Liara. Yeah, Liara A1. It's it's point one AU. That's very close to the primary. Go to body. Did that not go to body? Open. There we go. That's not Liara. Okay, fine. Let's do this some old-fashioned way. Uh, Liara. Ah, right. That was why the colony cost was so high. The chlorine. Other than that, pretty much habitable straight away. Hell, the hydrosphere is liquid? Why is the hydrosphere liquid when it's negative surface temperature? And the pressure's low. That should mean you... I guess if the pressure's low, you stay liquid longer. Yeah. We're down to 15 degrees, it's only... Okay. Um, very well. Mineral tectonics. Either way, I think this is a good place that we could start giving it a bit of a go-over. Once we have this as a base of operations, we can then have a look at the other stuff in the system. Anything here that might be of use to us? You know, moons or whatever. I mean, you could do the old-fashioned, which is you give some asteroid miners the order, go to asteroid with minerals. 
and then you just let them loose. And then you come back, you know, years later, and you tell a freighter to just go and collect stuff. But none of that's particularly great. Hmm. So we will give you the order to go to Liara A1. That's the wrong one. That's the right one. How's your fuel? 71%. We should probably top you up. So go to Earth. Refuel. And then go to Liara. Liara. A1. Move to. That's going to take you half a year anyway. And uh, Liara, we do not have a Liara A1. So we're going to need to bring Liara A1 up and establish a colony there. And then we need you to refresh. So we need to close you, open you again. Liara A1, environment, chlorine. Max atmosphere is zero, so that should remove the chlorine from the atmosphere. And we'll see how habitable that gets. Might need to increase the temperature a little bit. Okay. The other thing we need to do is we finally trained our divisional headquarters, which means that we have a divisional headquarters, four brigades, and a lot of the forces are going to be below them. Not all of them, but some. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set this up as an army. So we'll take the brigade headquarters... Assign the Divisional Headquarters as your HQ. And then we'll do the same for all of you. So the Divisional Headquarters now has the Brigades below it. I'm going to then set up the Heavy Assault Battalions as having that Brigade Headquarters. Now I think it's four to each. However... I don't have four heavies. I don't actually have enough to really fit this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up some for the moment. And I'm going to get you... Actually, you go to the 42nd. Uh, the, the 64th. Two. Three. Four. We should get a complaint when I do the next one. There we go. Four attach units. You can go to the 63rd, why not? So we need one more heavy uh, there and two more heavies here. And then that will be an entire army group. And then they should be able to train up and get, you know, better, more skilled. Be much more effective when we actually attack anywhere. Right. Close you up. And we're good. Don't think there's anything we need to change there. Coming over to Liara. What we do need to do is have a quick look at places such as Empros and Nanon, because both of those looked pretty. While not certain, certainly promising in what they had in them. In fact, if I bring Oscar, Nanon, Empros up, I'm bringing Oscar up as well because it had something there. Oscar. Okay, it was colonizable, but. Eh. Uh, let's try Empros next. Not surveyed, but relatively nice looking world. In addition, another world next to it that's pretty decent as well. And then if we bring up Nanon, this is the this is the prize, I think. Look at that. 91% covered in liquid. Temperature is good. Hell, this thing would be livable right now if it wasn't for... What is it? Is it the low pressure? Yeah, the oxygen is only 0.04. It needs to be 0.1. Yeah, this thing would be livable right now if we just increase the oxygen level. And there's enough stuff in the system. That might be a very interesting world. Binary component is nothing. I very much think we should have a look at that. But that will, of course, require us to go around and set up an attack. Well, and of course, we're missing our anti-missile missiles. Not that they're necessary, but they are at least somewhat of a blanket. You know, safety blanket. Makes me feel better at night. Mm, probably clear Empress first, just because that's two jumps. 
And that's one, two, three, four jumps, and then back again, so a little bit longer. We've also got to go deal with the swarm at some stage. We'll see. For now, though, I'm going to start skipping forwards, and I'll join you back in a minute. Hello! Okay, so we've just started scanning Greenfield with one of our science vessels, and we discovered this. An alien installation has been discovered on Grenfield A2 that may improve the output of research facilities based in this system. Okay, this is interesting. Greenfield A2. So, uh, Greenfield. That's a moon. Oh yeah, we were going to. In were we going to invade you? Pretty sure we we're going to invade you because that was a enemy-held world. Greenfield A2. So to check what the exact benefit is here. Mm, nice. Uh, we're going to set up a colony. And then we should see. <gasps> Construction production bonus of 70%. So any science labs based here will increase our construction production research by 70%. That is amazing. 70% is one of the higher percentages I've seen. That is really strong. And construction production is possibly one of the most used, if not the most used, research groups. You've seen us using construction production for ages. We've been talking about how Nathan's amazing. I think we've just changed our plans. We're not going to Liara anymore. I think I think we have to go here. I think we have to just I'm gonna get the terraforming base right now. Terraforming base, get get your ass over here. I can't. We don't have a jump gate. God damn it. Okay, get a jump gate. Who's who's a jump gate shit? You are. You're in Sol. You're in Liara. Hi, you're in Liara already. Uh Greenfield jump point. Build a jump gate. Then standard transit. Then build a jump gate back. Then standard transit back. And then build jump gates on these unknown ones as well. There we go. Yeah, we need to do that. Uh, we also might need to attack that moon at some point. Where are my assault transports? I can't remember where I put them now. I can use the normal transports, I guess. Did we finish the assault transports? Because when we finished them. Oh! That's why. We never separated them out from the shipyard. Yeah, they're still up here. That's fine. They use so much fuel, we might as well just use a, a normal troop transport. So I will get you to load up some troops. Now, probably best if we load up some troops that aren't being attached to a group. There we go. The problem is that we... We kind of assigned all of them. Yeah, I'm going to detach these two infantry. Clear HQ. Clear HQ. So that's the 59th and the 60th. So, Earth. Oh. We've already got seven of seven battalions. Hey, there we go. I didn't unload them. I thought I'd unloaded them. That's fine. Oh, no. That's... That's... We have seven out of seven space, right? Either way, load, load. If there is a problem, it will tell us. And then we're going to jump to Liara. Move to G Greenfield Jump Point. We can't get through just yet. We're going to have to wait for the uh, jump gate to be constructed, which will take 180 days. And then we'll go through that. 
Either way, that's our new plan. Greenfield. We need it. There also might be some interesting things on the planet, such as alien ruins that we need to investigate. Those will take a construction brigade. Yeah, my construction brigade's pretty big, but we'll need to, we'll need to do that when that comes to it. Either way, I'm going to start skimming forwards again. Catch you in a minute. Okay, big problem spotted. Uh, apparently... The Arendemski Bowden, which is one of our assault transports, suffered a maintenance failure. Now, this is above planet Earth. It shouldn't have a maintenance failure. Unless it's not in a maintenance facility. Maintenance facilities have a top limit. What's the top limit for Earth? 15,000 tons. How big is our assault transport? That's the wrong one. That under kind of ruins my point. Uh, 25,000 tons. We desperately need more maintenance facilities. That is not enough. So we're going to have to build some now, and I will reduce the number of fighter factories, or at least reduce the percentage. Oh, I started building fighter factories. I won't use them immediately, but we started working on that. Uh, what else? Maintenance supplies, you can probably go down to 10%. Because right now, we have some ships in orbit that are actually degrading and probably going to blow up. Uh, fighter factory... Construction factory... Anyone? Financial center. We're making money. We can reduce the financial center a little bit. Like it's 30%. Maintenance facility. Two hundred tons, so a hundred of them will be twenty thousand tons. We'll build a hundred of them. Yeah, that should be okay. Just in case, though, since we did have something blow up, I will just tell you to resupply and refuel from Colony. Just in case. Yeah, because you have used a thousand your maintenance supplies. And your maintenance clock is already saying you've been around for, like, almost two years. Oh, 2.3 years in your case. That's not good. That's really not good. Okay. Skipping ahead. And we've detected precursor population on this moon, which we had down as the moon 11? Oh, it's moon 7. I thought it was moon 11. We can check both. I'm pretty sure that it's just going to be moon 7, though. So we're going to have to put in a uh, moon 7 precursor colony. There we go. And I think we can delete our colony here. There's nothing in the colony, right? Just just in case. Because, you know, I've done that before. So you might remember. Uh, abandoned colony. There we go. It's done. Anyway, carry on. So yeah, no, no, completely correct. Moon 11 also has precursors. It's not just Moon 7. Moon 11 also is a precursor base in Greenfield. So we're going to set up a colony. Yep. And we're going to need to invade both of them. Woe is unto us. It's not going to be too much effort. Yeah, uh, that's probably uh, going to be a good call for us. Um... How's everything else going? Pretty good. Don't think there's anything else that's really happened in the meantime. Mostly we've just been bumbling along. Hmm. One thing I will do, or I should more precisely say, one thing I have done is now that we have both Cavalny 1 and Cavalny 2 doing pretty good mining jobs, is I've set a reserve level. So you can do this by just double clicking and then setting a reserve level for how much you would like them to store of a resource. They won't fire it away with mass driver. People can't take it away from transport, I think. It's just a, you know, a blocked number that they can't lose this much resource. They keep that there so that they can use it themselves. They will use it for their own projects, but no one can actually take the mineral off the planet. What I've done is both at Kvalne 1 and Kvalne 2 set a thousand as a minimum. And then I have set you to fire at Kvalne 2 you to fire at Cavalny 1. And I'll get you to fire at Cavalny 2 as well. 
And what will happen is they will both fire resources at the other one so that they have, you know, the resources shared between them. So they'll have most resources then. And the big factor here is that's going to make it really tough to pick up minerals because they're constantly spinning around and half the minerals will be on one planet and half the minerals will be on the other. So I fixed that, or at least I will be fixing that, by demanding an extra mass driver. Currently both of them one mass driver, which means they're going to shoot minerals at each other at the same rate. Which means that they will have the same amount of minerals. What I've done is request an extra mass driver for Cavalan A1, which means that Cavalan A1 will shoot twice as many minerals as Cavalan A2. Which means that even though Cavalan A2 will be trying to get them to A1, A1 will be shooting them back twice as quickly. So the minerals will actually end up building up on Cavalan A2. And that means if we get Cavalan... Da -da -da -da. Cavalan A2, which is slightly further out than Cavalan A1. And maybe closer to the jump point sometimes. It doesn't really matter. We'll actually collect the minerals and then we will send someone to collect the minerals from Cavalan A2 rather than having to collect them from both. No, it's a lot more work. Ooh, good money. Either way, just wanted to let you know that that's what I was setting up so that effectively we have a shared resource pool between the two because they fire it back and forth. They might not fire it back and forth particularly quickly with only one each once they get to pretty large sizes, but it should do the job. Right. Either way, I want to skip ahead. And apparently Moon 2 in green... How many precursors are there? And another one. This Greenfield A6, Moon 2... Oh, this is 4. Okay, let's look at 6. 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6. No, no, this is the same one. This is the same one. Okay, we're good. Crisis averted. Okay. So, managed to get the Sanderson over with uh, a couple of assaults on board. We've landed them here at Greenfield A4 Moon 7. One of three targets, I believe. And we are going to bring that up. Initiate ground combat against Precursor's attack. With a five day skip. And the question is what do they have? Uh, right. I think we won. Yes. They've surrendered to our Victoria forces. Our Victoria? Our Victorious. Yes, our Victorian forces. We we have um, muzzle loading rifles. Right. Really? No stockpile? T-Space Tracking Station. That's it. Oh, they had anti-ship missiles there. That's something, I guess. I mean, we can always keep them as a fallback if we desperately need them. I don't think we will, though. But it's nice to know that, you know, they're here if we want them. Uh, we will then take the fleet... Get you to grab load ground forces. Uh, no, apparently not. Wrong one. You. You. And then we'll head to Moon 11. And then unload ground forces at Moon 11. <sighs> because that's what we do these days. We are a delivery service around Greenfield. Okay, we lost our contact there. That's mainly because we just killed off the entire colony and made it ours. It happens. I'll also abandon all the colonies that aren't um, real ones, like the ones we set up so that we could attack from them. Okay, we're at moon 11. 
They haven't detected anything, so maybe it was a different Moon 11? Hmm. It could have been. I didn't pay attention to the Moon 11 about which planet it was, but there are three planets in the Greenfield system, all of which have extensive moons. I really should be detecting something right now. I'll check on the planet anyway. So let's bring up population. Ground units. No one to attack. Yeah. So that was the wrong moon. Uh, so instead, we will load ground unit. And we will head off to moon two. But we're going to have to look at another moon 11 on a different planet. I'm not sure which one it is. There is another one. Either way, we're just going to clear out. I'll let you know if anything interesting shows up or anything of note. I'm back in a sec. Right, so time's advanced a bit. We've got rid of most of the precursors. They're all gone. Uh, or at least, you know, the little bases. We found them in the end. Uh, however, we have just finished our uh, research into the Infernal Confusement Fusion Drive. Internal Confinement. It's one up from what we've got. And, of course, we finished um, building our missiles. Now... We could do more missiles. We go through them pretty quick. Thing is, these missiles are improvements on existing ones that eh, they weren't very good to begin with. Uh, they were, you know, stop gaps based on the technology we had. We've kind of improved, but kept them at the same speed. Now we have a new drive and we have a few other technologies. We definitely could do with actually improving the missiles by making them faster. That's something that we might do in the very near future. If not now, then maybe next episode or something. I also want to have a quick look at what we're going to research next. Now we've got our new drive technology because new drive technology is a big leap. So I'm thinking power propulsion. What have we got? Fuel consumption, 0.5 liters per engine. Mm, that's pretty nice. Engine power modifier, 2.5. Also nice for missiles. Uh, magnetic confinement, fusion reactor technology. That's going to be way too long for us to be able to do at 45,000, not without a good bonus to it. We've got 35% bonus. That's not really enough. What I'm thinking is we go... Mm, Max Engine Power. That sounds like a really terrible name. My name's Max Engine Power. I'm a superhero. What do you do? Oh, I've got a powerful um, powerful engine. Uh, we'll do that, and that'll be a good benefit to our missiles, because that will mean that, of course, we double that. So instead of 2 to double to 4, we instead get 2.5 double to 5 times for our top velocity, which will make us pretty hard to shoot down. How long will you take? February next year. Yeah, that's fine. Also, can I ship the operation thing with Nathan? We just want to try and knock this out of the park before J Nathan dies, because, you know, he's getting old. It's going to happen. I might just remove a few from our person researching shield regeneration rate 3. Yeah, that way that's going to be done this year as well. I think it's a good call. Uh, beyond that, we're not going to build any more missiles. We're good with those. Yeah. So, I think this calls for a job. Oh, we also got enough maintenance facilities to be able to actually use these uh, assault transports for overhauling. That's going to be helpful. Uh, right, right, right. What are you? You know, around here somewhere. Uh, I am looking for Crusade Force Sol. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna go to Earth. I'm gonna unload Ordnance. I'm gonna load Ordnance from Colony. I'm gonna skip Fortress five days. And now they should have uh, a decent, you know, supply of missiles. They will have finches and eagles galore. And with that, we should be able to just send them off to go and have a little bit of a hunt. So we could have a hunt in Empros, or we could go have a hunt in Nanon. Nanon is a better system. Empros is closer. Nanon's double as many jumps, so I think we're going to go to Empros. Before we do this, I think it's worth checking our fuel levels. 11 million. Not ideal. I'd like more. Mm. Might be the stage where we start thinking about getting ourselves a giant orbital habitat. 
and just dumping it in like the orbit of one of our gas giants and then just getting someone to ferry fuel back and forth. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's something we'll want to do in the near future. So, instead, Crusade for Assault. Fleet, Crusade Force. How are you feeling? Still not full on ammo, actually. Okay. Nonetheless, you're going to go off to Nori. And then you're going to go off to Improst. And I'd like you to actually then have a look at Improst itself. And you should see that there's going to be a lot of precursors there that you can shoot at. And it's going to be a lovely turkey shoot. You can kill all them precursors. And then when you get back, we can work on maybe a new missile system. Maybe a giant orbital habitat that's just going to sit in orbit of like Jupiter or something. And just get ourselves a lot of fuel. Uh, it's not going to have any real capability to go back to Earth or whatever, because it's going to be pretty slow. But it's going to stay in the orbit, and it's going to keep refining fuel, and it's going to have several million litres capable. And then we'll get a fuel tanker just to run back and forth, and just deliver the fuel back to Earth, and go back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. And that way, it should be totally fine. Either way, for now, I've been Netrealism. Uh, if you have enjoyed, please remember to like. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Next episode, looks like we're going to have some fun. Until then, however, like, subscribe, stay shiny.